Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Uchi One Small Finance Bank Limited Q1 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by IIFL Securities Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rikin Shah from IIFL Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Um, thank you, Salvin. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining the call. Uh, we have with us the management team of Ujjivan Small Finance Bank to discuss the business strategy and outlook post the 1Q results. The management team is uh, represented by Mr. Itira Davis, MD and CEO, Ms. Carol Furtado, Chief Business Officer, Mr. Martin P.S., Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Ashish Goel, Chief Credit Officer, Mr. M.D. Ramesh Murthy, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Vivasandra, Head Microbanking, and Mr. Dipak Khetan, Head Financial Planning and Strategy, IR. Uh, with this, uh, I'll pass on the call to uh, Mr. Ipira Davis. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shah. Good evening and welcome to our first quarter earnings call. I am delighted to share with you our first quarter performance. Despite Q1 generally being a slow quarter, our performance has been robust, building on the strong base of financial year 23. Our pre-profit, uh, pre-provision uh, operating profit and PAT have reached new highs of 480, 458 crore and 324 crore respectively, which is 52% and 60% higher than Q1 of the last year respectively. Even Q4, even against Q4 FY23, it is 12% and 5% higher respectively. Our return on assets at 3.8% is again something that puts us ahead of our peers and that has been the trend for the last few quarters. Some of it is due to lower credit cost, but even our PPOP ROA at 5.4% is quite remarkable. We posted a return on equity of 30%, which also means that the business is self-funding itself, leading to an improvement in CRAR from 25.8% to 26.7%. Now, starting with the business numbers, we dispersed 5,284 crore, up 22% year on year. While the demand continues to be there, disbursement for microbanking was sequentially low due to Q1 being historically a weak quarter. We expect the disbursements to pick up again by the second half of the fiscal year. We acquired about 2.6 new customers this quarter in microbanking. As our new branches move towards maturity, we will see more traction in microbanking, especially in the new customer acquisition. Among the secured products, affordable housing, which is now more than 3,650 crore, continued to show strong disbursements, with 418 crore in the first quarter, as against 288 crores in the first quarter of the last year. The business is slowly moving to other quarter to improve operating efficiency. We have already opened four hubs in Abdullah, Coimbatore, Mysore, and Jaipur. More will be commissioned over the next few quarters. As these hubs gain business from it will further propel for them. I'm really sorry to interrupt. Uh, well, sir, there is a lot of disturbance from your end right now due to which you are not audible. If okay. you could please just readjust the microphone where it is placed, that would be great. Yeah, is it better now? Uh, yes, sir. That has made some difference. Thank you. Okay, I'll just go through the business numbers again in case it was not very clear. Okay. Starting with the business numbers, we dispersed 5,284 crores, up 22% year on year. While the demand continues to be there, disbursement for microbanking was sequentially low due to Q1 being a historically weak quarter. 
We expect the disbursements to pick up again by the second half of the fiscal year. We acquired 2.6 lakh new customers this quarter in micro banking. Our new branches move, as our new branches move to maturity, we will see more traction in micro banking business, especially in new customer acquisition. Among digital products, affordable housing, which is now more than 3,650 crore, continue to show strong disbursements with 418 crore in the first quarter against just 288 crore in the first quarter of the previous year, that is FY23. Business is slowly moving to a hub and spoke model to improve operating efficiency. We have already opened four hubs, one in Ahmedabad, the other in Kwanzaa, the Mysore, and Jaipur. More will be commissioned over the next few quarters. As these hubs gain business momentum, it will further propel our growth. The FIG dispersed 320 crore, up 113% year on year. MSME continues to be in transition. We have a few more technology-related changes to be introduced before we ramp up the business. This will be much like what we went through during the housing uh, you know, transformation. So once that is ready, we are ready to launch. So we also launched the semi-formal lab product in Q1, and more products are in the pipeline. The business should start to pick up towards the end of this cycle. Vehicle finance and gold loans should also start to contribute in the second half of the year. Our gross loan book now crossed 25,000 crore, and our June 30th was 25,326 crore, up 30% year on year and 5% quarter on quarter. Talking about liabilities, our deposit grew 45% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter to 26,660 crore. We continue to see movement of cash deposits towards term deposits this quarter, which is in line with the industry trend. Our retail term deposits grew 71% year on year to 10,970 crores, while CASA grew 27% year on year to 6,556 crores. Our cost of funds has continued to rise this quarter in, in uh, line with the industry. Despite pressure from cost of funds side, we were able to expand our NIMS this quarter. This was a result of consciously reducing excess liquidity, which was driving a negative carry and pulling down NIMS, and benefiting from the yield expansion of an effect of book repricing, which we took last year. Last year, it took they had two repricings on the microfinance book, one in uh, September and the other in March this year. All of those Sorry to interrupt you. Again. Again. Apologies. Uh, sir, uh, there is a lot of disturbance from your line. Just let me quickly get you reconnected. Ladies and gentlemen, the management line is now connected. Sir, you may proceed. I'll just go back a few sentences. Uh, to our gross loan book. Uh, our gross loan book has now crossed 25,000 crore, and on June 30th, it was 25,326 crore, which is a growth of 30% year on year and 5% quarter on quarter. Talking about our liabilities, our deposit grew 45% year on year and 4% quarter on quarter to 26,660 crore. We continue to see some movement of CASA deposits towards term deposits this quarter, which is in line with the industry trend. Our retail term deposits grew 71% year on year to 10,970 crore, while CASA grew 27% year on year to 6,556 crores. Our cost of funds has continued to rise this quarter in line with the industry. Despite pressure from the cost of fund side, we were able to expand our NIMS this quarter. This was a result of consciously reducing the excess liquidity, which was driving negative carry, and pulling down our NIMS, and benefiting also from the yield expansion as an effect of our book repricing post 
the hike we took last year. Last year we took two hikes on the on the microfinance front, one in September and one in the, in March this year. The full effect of that is being felt in this quarter and beyond. So our net interest income was up 32% year on year and 7% quarter on quarter, driven by gross loan book growth and yield expansion. Uh, coming to credit and collections, our asset quality remains sturdy with a GNP of 2.4% versus 2.6% sequentially, uh, while our NNPA continues to remain negli negligible at 0.06%. Slippages remain under control with Q1 slippages at 103 crore and upgrade and recoveries at 77 crores. Restructured book now is at 182 crores with uh, June 23 collection efficiency at 102%. While the NPA collection has started to move down towards normalization, bad debt recovery remains strong this quarter. We recovered 35 crores. As we have already mentioned, our bad debt recoveries should be significant even in financial year 24, although it would be lower than what we recovered in financial year 23. During the quarter, our branch expansion continued with 32 new branches added. 14 of these were in the east, 8 in the north, 6 in the, six in the south, and 4 in the west. This quarter, and uh, that takes a total to 661 as of the 30th of June. We will now be adding 70-odd uh, branches for the rest of this year. We are in the final stages of testing our digital fixed deposit offering, which will provide seamless experience to our customers and help us to serve beyond brick and mortar. Uh, now an update on the merger with our promoter, Ujivan Financial Services. The hearing of our application with the NCLT was completed on June 28th, and we expect to receive the order soon entailing directions for scheduling the meetings of stakeholders and other directions as the NCLT may deem fit. On my succession plan, as I've been mentioning, the board is working on identifying the right candidates. The board is committed to identify the potential candidate with strong business orientation and a connect with the ground and dedication towards building a mass market bank. Both internal and external candidates are being considered. And uh, you know, much before the due date, the transition will be completed. As you, as many of you would have noticed, we have launched our nationwide brand campaign a few days ago, earlier this week. This campaign is prominent step towards establishing Ujivan as a mass market bank. Previously, we had not invested much on ATL brand campaigns, but moving ahead, we will continue to invest in brand building. This will provide our branches more awareness, and help us build trust across our customer base. This, in return, will push our retail liabilities further. To conclude, I would add that business momentum remains strong, reassuring our confidence towards the guidance that we shared at the beginning of this financial year. Thank you. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question comes from the line of Nidesh from Investec. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, two, three questions. Firstly, uh, in the MSME segment, uh, uh, we have seen uh, some deterioration in asset quality and growth slowing down. Uh, we are uh, reorienting that business. Uh, can you speak about the strategy uh, 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 in which segment we will be operating in? Uh, yields, what will what, 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 what be the targeted yields and uh, profitability in that uh, MSME, uh, MSA book going forward? Yeah. 
Well, could you please repeat that question? Uh, so uh, I'm asking about the strategy in the MSc book, uh, given that we have seen uh, growth slowing down uh, uh, where we have been a bit cautious and we are reorienting that business. So what is the strategy going forward? What segment, customer segment, uh, yields, ticket size we will be focusing on? Hi, uh, this is Padre Sotado. Um As uh, we have been talking about uh, the transition that has been taking place in our MSME segment, uh, we have been talking about our uh, customers uh, uh, under various categories. One is the semi-formal lab. Uh, the other one is the formal lab. Uh, we are also getting into the working capital uh, facilities, supply chain, uh, and digital MSME lending. Semi-formal lab, the target is semi-formal micro and small enterprises who are transitioning from the unorganized and the informal business model to the organized and formal business setup. Here, the uh, offering uh, would range uh, from 15 lakhs to 1.5 crores and the tenor up to 12 years. Uh, we have already launched this product uh, since May and uh, this product seems to be on a growth path. Uh, the formal lab is where we would be focusing on formal, micro, and small and medium enterprises um, who are operational as an organized formal business setup. Um, here, uh, we are in um, uh, proposing to uh, offer a loan size of around 25 lakhs to around 5 crores with a tenor up to 15 years. Um, this would be set up in select locations to grow the lab portfolio. Uh, the third line would be the working capital facilities, again, where the target is formal, micro, small, and medium enterprises. This is to fulfill their uh, business banking needs. And uh, we would be offering a variety of uh, products here, fund-based and non-fund-based facilities. Um, here, again, the ticket size would be around 15 lakhs to around 10 crores. Um, supply chain is, again, there, uh, which is being... Uh, worked on to meet the cash flow based short term funding requirements of our customers. And uh, we also would be having digital MSME lending, which we will grow through our fintech partnerships. Um, you know, uh, yes, uh, we have been uh, operational uh, since May in the semi-formal lab segment, and we are investing heavily to build infrastructure and internal capabilities to strongly address the other four business lines in the MSME vertical. And uh, that is the reason why the, the transition is taking some time to operationalize. And uh, we have made significant process in designing the strategy, and uh, we would be showing the progressive outcomes in the coming quarters. And the full extent of the investment would be visible in the span of the next two, three financial years. Sure. And uh, is it reasonable to expect that the yields in this portfolio will be less than sub 12 percent, uh, given that we are largely operating in formal segment and higher ticket size? Yes, the blended rate would be around 12, 13 percent. Sure. And uh, uh, a data keeping question on the customer acquisition in the in the microfinance uh, group and individual loan side. Uh, uh, what is the uh, count of customers that we have we have acquired in this quarter? And what is the active customer base on both microfinance group and individual uh, as of June 23? So, yeah, hello. Uh, as far as uh, you know, customer acquisition is concerned, we have acquired 2.6 lakh uh, new customers this quarter. And what was your second question? Uh, overall, uh, our base in microfinance and active, it is close yeah. to 40 lakh. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, I, I wanted to break up in group and individual, if, if that is possible. Okay. For the quarter or for the entire micro, micro banking customer base? Uh, as of June 23, what is the active customer yeah, yeah. base so in microfinance group? In micro banking, and we have uh, 40 lakh uh, borrower base. Out of 40 lakh, 36.5 lakh customers are group loans and 3.5 lakh customers are uh, individual loans. Sure. Uh, thank you, sir. That's it for my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your questions to one or two per participant should you have a follow-up question we would request you to rejoin the queue the next question comes from the line of Shailesh Kanani from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations, sir, on excellent performance during the quarter and thanks for the opportunity. Sir, my first question is with respect to our individual lending book. Uh, we are seeing very good traction on that front. Uh, can you shed some qualitative aspect with respect to uh, uh, the book and the customer profile given that it's a high ticket size loan? Uh, how, how, what traction we are seeing and what kind of customers we are seeing over there? <coughs> Yes, uh, individual loan is something which, uh, you know, is an old business in, in uh, Ujiban. We started this business in 2008, long back, as we realized there is a huge potential of customers upgradation to, from GL to IL. Uh, our current average ticket size is close to 1.3 lakh in IL, uh, where the customer graduates after two to three cycles. And we see a huge potential here because a uh, large uh, number of customers actually graduate after, uh, try to graduate after two to three cycles. And there is a gap. There are microfinance players and then there are other players also who are into formal financing but uh, these customers don't get uh, finance from uh, anybody. We have started this, we uh, have close to 3.5 lakh customers at, at this point in time and we want to grow this business as we see a huge potential going forward. Largely customers are divided into uh, three categories. Uh, we have uh, business loans, we also have agri and allied business uh, in IL and uh, a good amount of customers also take home improvement loans. And these are the basic three categories of loans that we offer. Okay, uh, that's useful. Uh, so the second question is with respect to yields on affordable housing segment. Uh, they seem to be little on the lower side. Uh, so can you just highlight about that and if there is any scope of improvement in that, uh, in that segment? Uh, yeah, the yield for the affordable housing segment is around 13%, mm -hmm. which is excluding the MLAB business. And it has been in this uh, line only around 12.9, 13% odd. And uh, I do uh, not understand what you mean that it is on a lower side. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, just just uh, just uh, considering that it would be semi-informal segment. Uh, I was also view that the yields might improve on that front. So just wanted to know your view on that. As we move more towards the tier two and three towns and beyond that, yes, there would be a little uh, improvement that might happen. Our uh, yield on disbursement is around uh, thirteen point two percent. So for salary, the yield is around eleven to twelve, and for uh, semi informal uh, self employed and all uh, is around 14% okay that's all from my side thanks a lot thank you sandwich thank you the next question comes from the line of manish ostwal from nirmal bang securities private limited please go ahead yeah Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question on uh, your com uh, your comments in the press release where you mentioned that the, uh, we remain confident of our sub-100 basis point credit cost for FI24. It, uh, given your collection trends uh, in the business and uh, uh, so this guidance need to, don't you think it need to revise downward or uh, still you think uh, there is a risk which may play out? So, uh, thank you. This is Ashish. So, in the first quarter, uh, we have actually had uh, much lower than the uh, a low credit cost. You could say about 10 bips on the overall book. We have, do, we have given a guidance of about 1%, but our book is maturing and will be maturing, will continue to mature during the course of the year. So there could be slightly higher credit cost in the third and fourth quarter, which we are factoring in when we give a guidance of about 1%. But we've always maintained that it will be lower than 1%. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, we maintain that. We will continue to see uh, a lower credit cost during this quarter, uh, quarter on quarter this year. And it should, you know, sum up to less than 1% for the year. Yeah. 
and secondly in our one of the uh, slide where we have mentioned the collection efficiency in segment wise so i was uh, seeing uh, msme the collection efficiency is quite stagnant and the second is other segment so uh, what are the efforts we are making to improve the collection trend in these two categories so in msme our what you see here on the slide is uh, build in the month and collected in the month but there is also a good amount of additional collection which we do uh, which is uh, collected in the next month so overall if you see the collection efficiency uh, including the overdues it has been maintained at 98.5% throughout the quarter what you see here in the slide is uh, 88 87 88 which is the collection for the month but there is also overdue collection which we do month on month mm -hmm. so this is also a result of uh, stabilized cases in bucket 1 and 2 okay and anish uh, if you see the additional collection that also is quite a hefty amount that's what ashish is referring to also one more thing or uh, the collection efficiency 88 87% is including the gnpa par portfolio that we have and given that msme uh, current gnpa numbers are high this number seems to be a little lower however uh, as he mentioned the nda bucket collection is quite good and even from the par uh, sma 012 uh, and your npa collections are quite good which are happening so if you add up the total collection that will seem to be a very good collection that is coming in uh, thank you deepak and uh, thank you management team for answering my question thank you thank you much anish thank you the next question comes from the line of renish from icici please go ahead yeah hi sir and congrats on a good set of numbers so just uh, two question so one is on the uh, liability side so if we uh, refer to the new customer acquisition in the quarter actually that has gone up from uh, 335000 to 341000 and when we look at the uh, average sub balance it is uh, that also remained uh, sort of flatish sequentially and despite that our sub balances has uh, sort of contracted by 4% so what uh, explain this sir uh renish saw balances if you see it's a industry phenomena that the saw balances kata is going down for almost all the banks who have reported their results so far if hmm. you see for even a little longish period you will actually see that the kata has uh, grown quite handsomely so we would say that uh, this is more or less in line with the industry a little better off with the industry and with the new in the facilities that we are providing new products that we are coming up with and uh, the retail uh, the, the brand campaign that we have launched these uh, balances will improve going forward in the coming quarters got it and uh, secondly uh, on the roi side so you know so last four five quarters uh, uh, given the uh, very low provisioning uh, requirement uh, plus the uh, the strong avm growth Uh, so now on a steady state basis once the credit cost normalize as uh, you know you guys were highlighting that second half we'll see a slightly uh, higher credit cost so on a steady state basis what kind of a roa uh, this business can generate uh renish on the roa side we have mentioned that for this year we will definitely see a 3% plus roa we maintain uh -huh. that guide uh, guidance on that we have men uh, mentioned that the roe for this year will be 22% plus we maintain that guide there might uh, there might be a little uh, upswing to that depending upon the market condition but right now we do not want to change any guidance uh, not for this year i'm saying on a steady state basis once you know some of the uh, operating parameters normalize especially grade cost Uh, so in that scenario does the uh, let's say the current business mix uh, should generate a 2 and 1/2% roi on sustainable basis or uh, uh, how how one should look at it definitely we can do that and more, maybe more than that we can definitely do that okay okay that's it from my side deepak thank you thank you the next question comes from the line of sukriti jiwa rajka from lambron capital please go ahead go ahead 
I just want to follow up a little bit on the um, asset quality of the MSME book. Like you just mentioned, both the GNP and the power numbers are quite high. And the thing is that they've been quite sticky and quite high for a few quarters now. What is causing the stress? Uh, which pockets, which sectors? Maybe some light on why these numbers continue to be so high, even the power numbers. Um, and uh, uh, what is the path to bringing this down? So there are, uh, you know, two, three reasons that I would want to list down. One, our book has not grown, so therefore the percentages are looking high. But if you look at the absolute numbers, the absolute numbers have been stable and move a little up or down quarter on quarter. But, the, you know, the denominator effect has uh, impacted the percentages. In terms of uh, slippages, these slippages have been under control. The NPA number in absolute number has been under control. And our bucket X efficiency has been... Operator request has been initiated. If you'd like to cancel this request, please press star zero again. Leading indicators. Yeah, in terms of geography, you mentioned that uh, which geographies uh, uh, are causing this. There is a little bit of uh, NPA in West Bengal, which is slightly elevated as compared to the rest of the regions. Got it. Got it. And, and a uh, similar question for MSI. If you are seeing any early pockets of... Um, uh, you know, early warning signals or any early po uh, pockets of stress because the thing is every MSI, every MSI is, is guiding to 30% growth over a very high base and a lot of banks are looking to aggressively get into this space. So as a conservative lender, are there any signals of, uh, you know, customer over leverage or something that is coming up in our radar? You know, one of our one of the advantages we carry is our book is spread across 25 states. So that makes us less vulnerable to geographic uh, stresses. So, uh, and you know, we also have a statewide cap. Most of our high bigger states are also capped in the range of 15%. And there are three states which are above 10 percent. Every other state is uh, between 5 to 10 percent. In terms of high growth states, our uh, market share is in the range of 3 to 4 percent all, all across every state. So there is no specific area where we have any high concentration of the book. In terms of growth, we've been maintaining, uh, you know, a 0.6 percent 30 plus MOB. Uh, sorry, 30 plus in uh, 18, 18 MOV book, which we've been monitoring for the last 24 months consistently post-COVID. And this has remained steady for us. One more thing which gives us confidence is our non-delinquent book, which is, uh, you know, bucket zero. That is That has been consistent above 99.8% for the last 18 months. So we've not seen any specific areas in which there are any, you know, stresses building up. Got it. No geographies. I understand that you have very well diversified your book, and that is not even the question. Uh, it is really on a macro level if anything is coming up, whether it affects you or not, um, in pockets, in areas, in geographies. If there is a change in, uh, you know, you know, there are certain areas at certain times which are very topical in nature, like the floods, uh, or if there is any other natural calamity, those are the kind of things which do affect us. So we had a marginal dip, for example, in certain regions in North. But those get recovered over the next month or so because these are again 15 to 20 day phenomena. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for answering my question. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Pritesh Bum from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. I agree. Uh, just two questions. One, one is a clarity needed. Uh, 
you've been grow, uh, as a percentage of loans 43% comes from new loans acquired is this a phenomenon that uh, the existing loans are migrating to IL or we are actually uh, you know uh, have a rise in terms of new fresh loans so both both things are happening uh, our GL customers are also migrating to IL as well as uh, uh, new customers are also getting added so we for example said that uh, we added about 2.6 lakh new customers in this quarter this is in addition to about 9.6 lakh new customers we had added in the last full year uh, the net addition last year was about six and a half lakh so yes new customer acquisition which we opened last year was a strategy and uh, we are also opening new branches so that also gives a slight slightly you know uh, increase in our uh, uh, in our nc numbers so it's a combination of all these factors and and that is the reason our ticket size also has gone down is it yes the last year uh, you may, you may remember about five quarters back our ticket size size had gone up six quarters back because we were doing largely repeat loans and we were very conscious about doing new new customer acquisition uh, because we didn't know what was the impact of covid and how long it would last but last year when we started our nca uh, strategy again we started seeing as the uh, as the new customer percentage has gone up the average ticket size has con uh, gone down sure and which geography these new customers are coming from if you, you can give some more color on that all all geographies these are across branches we have added the uh, team members across branches and uh, therefore the there is no there is no skew in any uh, any state got it second question was uh, the off roll employees of collections are going down steadily uh, at what level will uh, steady that number and uh, uh, is that the reason why the other opex uh, quarter on quarter was down so uh, so the way we are looking at it is uh, our cost of collections it remains in the range of about 20 percent with our off roll staff there are two factors here one is the entire book which was affected by covid is now 700 dpd and above so obviously then collections will slow down over a period of time and therefore as the collections have slowed down we have proportionately brought down our team size the metric that we have followed is about 20 percent cost of collections as the numbers keep going down the team can be uh, suitably you know downsized and the second reason is also that our NPA book has not grown in fact there has been a steady reduction of uh, accounts in the NPA and the return of pool. Last year, we reduced more than 1 lakh accounts uh, from NPA plus write-off. So that has also contributed to a reduction in the off-roll team strength. And your query on whether that has led to the OPEX reduction versus Q4? No, that is not really the primary reason for reduction uh, versus Q4. Q4 uh, business numbers disbursements were much higher versus Q1 that is the reason why the numbers are lower sure that means it was a BAU basic business as usual yeah it, yeah it's a business as usual thank you thank you so, yeah thank you the next question comes from the line of Himanshu Taluja from Aditya Birla mutual funds please go ahead Hi, sir. Uh, congratulations for a good quarter. Just a one question has been uh, from my end. Most of the questions has been answered. Sir, uh, uh, last year you have made a, a you have strengthened your collection team, and as a result, we have seen a very strong uh, bad debt recoveries as well. But and given you have seen uh, the momentum to continue FY24, uh, sir, last year I think uh, you have made a good uh, uh, good collections uh, bad debt recovery from the early delinquency period. Now, given the current NPA pool would be in a more harder buckets, so what are what sort of the recoveries that you think that uh, you can uh, probably achieve in FI24? Uh, anything, and do you need the similar work for, uh, collection workforce uh, uh, in this year as well, which you have uh, probably which you have added the last year? 
Himanshu, this is uh, something that Mr. Davis touched in his uh, opening remark also that uh, FY24 also bad debt recovery would continue to be very handsome. However, maybe a little lower than what we did in FY23. FY23 we did around 135 odd crore. This year it would be a little lower than that. Whether it will be 100 crore, 120 crores or 90 crores, I cannot comment on that number right now. But it should be in that range at least. That is what we believe. In terms of uh, collection team size, as Ashish has already mentioned in the last uh, query, the pool, the hard bucket pool where uh, collection, difficult collection is there, that pool size is shrinking as we move forward. So which is why the collection team size, slowly you will see the off-roll will shrink as we move along. But the on-roll team will stay, that is a strategy that we'll have, and off-roll will continue to shrink. Sure, sir, sure. So second is uh, just a few, uh, two more data keeping questions. Uh, what sort of the PSL income that you have made last year and what you uh, and what you have recognized in this quarter and generally which quarters generally you use your higher PSL income? This quarter is 26 crore roughly. Last quarter PSL income, last year PSL income, let me check, uh, was around what, 40 crores? I'll just give you the exact number. What was last year full uh, full year uh, PSL income? Uh, we generally uh, PSL income you'll see coming in in the first quarter and the fourth quarter. However, I, I'll also uh, yeah full year was 28 crore. Last year full year was 28 crores. I, oh. I will also mention that uh, when you look at PSL income, you also look at the kind of IBPC that we are doing because that also gives a similar benefit to the book in terms of uh, lower cost of fund. So last year on an average, we were having around uh, say 1500 crore of IBPC. This year already, I think the IBPC number is a little higher than that and will continue at this number, this rate for the full year around 2000 odd crore. So that additional benefit is also there this year. Sure, sir, sure. And just last question, sir, within the MFI, any sort of the target that you have between the individual and the group, do you have or uh, how one should uh, look at the growth uh, between the two? So, yeah, obviously, uh, GL, we want to grow much faster than GL because we have a captive customer base of over 40 lakhs in GL where a lot of customers want to graduate to IL. So, we will see IL growing much faster than GL in this answer, in this answer also. Uh, and we'll continue a trend from the last financial year. And uh, for that, we have also strengthened our IL team and we have, uh, you know, increased the number of feet on the street for IL in branches. Sure, sir. Sir, uh, thanks a lot uh, and congratulations for a good quarter. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. The next question comes from the line of Ashleigh Sonjay from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi team, congratulations on a good quarter. Uh, I have just one question on the uh, OPEX for us. Uh, if I look at the cost to assets ratio that has been steadily coming down over the past few years and uh, given that we are in a period where we are reporting very strong return ratios, uh, how do we look at the cost ratio going ahead uh, in terms of the investments that we, if we plan to make in the franchise? Ashlech, uh, we have mentioned both for the cost to income ratio and cost to operating cost to average asset ratio. For this year, they will be more or less stagnant. So right now, we do not uh, change the guidance. Uh, we may see a positive swing there, but uh, right now, we'll maintain the guidance number. We'll see if we want to change the guidance when we come next time to meet the street. But right now, we do not want to make any changes there. Okay, and if I go go ahead a few years in FY25-26, any... Uh, over over uh, next three years, yes, definitely these numbers will come down slowly, maybe around uh, cost to income ratio, maybe around by 300, 350 basis point every year, it may come down. Okay, perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question comes on the line of Manan Tichoriwala from ICICI Prudential Asset Management. Please go ahead. 
Uh, hi, good evening. I had a couple of questions. So first on the uh, group loans concept. So what is the average ticket size that we have now in the first, second, third cycles? Uh, the question is, what is your average ticket size in group loan in first, second and third cycle? Right? Yes. So uh, our average ticket size in the first loan is close to uh, between 40 to 42, 42,000. And uh, in repeat loans, uh, in the second cycle, is, it is close to 50. And uh, third cycle onwards, the uh, average ticket size is close to 60. Okay, okay. And uh, how soon can we refinance a customer uh, to a second or a subsequent cycle? And what is the tenor of the loans generally? So, uh, you know, uh, our, our, the maximum tenor that we allow to our customers in group loan is uh, three years. And we, our average tenor is close to uh, 22 22 to 23 months and we allow our right. customers to take loan uh, repeat loan only after completion of 70 percent of their EMI 70 percent of the EMI okay okay Understood. and how much of the loan book is now under three years sir three years I'm oh, sorry over three years so, yeah yeah yes uh, our uh, uh, you know the three years tenor loan is close to 20 22 20 to 22 percent of our entire portfolio at this point of time okay okay understood and sir on the individual loans uh, are these all our mfi customers or are we sourcing from the market as well so yeah we have open market acquisition strategy as well and uh, we have kind of restarted our uh, uh, open market acquisition as we have stabilized after the effect of pandemic and before that also we were acquiring open market customers but these customers are largely referred by our, our internal customers microfinance customers only at this point of time our uh, open market customer acquisition is close to five to six percent of whatever we acquire in your lending but this number will also slightly go up in the financial year as we go ahead Mr. Manan, may we request you that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn. The next question comes from the line of Manuj Oberoi from ES Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, sir. Hi. Congratulations on uh, strong numbers. So this is Rajiv here. So just, uh, I'm left with just one question, and that is, uh, when I look at uh, your OnePlus and GNPLs in affordable housing portfolio, yeah, can you hear me? Sorry, we're not able to hear you. Now, now is it better? Mr. Manuj, could you please fall back to the queue? We shall move to the next questioner. The next question comes from the line of Amit Jain from Access Capital. Could we reconnect the call? Ladies and gentlemen, the management line has been connected back again. Mr. Amit Jain, you shall proceed with your question. Thank you. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can. I yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my question, sir. So I had a question on margin. So given that now that the rates have stabilized, and uh, do we see that the cost of funds could increase further from current levels? And similarly on loan repricing, is it largely done or do we have, have some bandwidth to further increase the uh, uh, loan, uh, loan uh, prices? Uh, first on, on your cost of fund uh, query, so Cost of fund may give, go up from here as well because repricing of the old FDs may happen. So to some extent, we believe cost of fund uh, has not yet peaked. Uh, maybe uh, we are around few quarters, maybe two quarters at least away when we see the interest rate cycles also peaking out or starting to see sliding down. So to that extent, we'll keep that as an open-ended answer. On the repricing side, there's a lot of room left. We took uh, two rate hikes last year. One was in September, 50 basis point on our MB book. And one was in March, 50 basis point uh, again on 1st of March. Of the existing book, 30% book is on the March pricing. 30% book is on the September pricing. And 40% book is before that. So on that 40% book, 100 basis point repricing is to happen. On that 30% book, 50 basis point repricing is yet to happen. 
so there's a lot of room left on the mb book uh, repricing to happen so so in that case uh, we still maintain our guidance of around 9% for for uh, for this year is that we, is that the fair fair assumption yeah we remain very confident that we'll be able to hold on to the nims and the second question is is on the employees employee base so around you have added around 2500 employees over the last 6 uh, months so mostly i assume this these would be in street on street is that right that's right and uh, any particular geographies where we where we are adding employees or or is it all across see uh, employee addition to a large extent is happening because of the new branches that are coming this quarter we had opened around 32 branches in q1 and in q4 also there was a lot of branches that opened last year we did around 52 and most of the branch opening were back ended so there were a lot of these branches were opened and the employees were hired for the new branches going ahead 9 months we will be opening around 70 branches to that extent some employee hiring will be ha- happening whatever branches we are opening this uh, second quarter to some extent some uh, hiring has already happened apart from this the hiring is happening maybe we have introduced rm modules for our branch banking so there there is some bit of a hiring happening some bit of a hiring is happening on our secured books where we are growing the business for example housing is going very well there some uh, ground level team is being added an msc as the new pro- uh, products come there will be a little bit of a hiring happening so those will be additional hiring apart from the branches sure sir that, that's 85% that. of whatever is hiring happening is uh, happening is in the front level staff that is happening sure sir that is very helpful thank you sir thank you thank you The next question comes from the line of Manoj Obroy from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, this is Rajiv here. Uh, thank you for taking my question and congratulations on very strong performance. So my thank question you. is is on affordable housing book. Uh, so as I see your one plus and your GNPLs uh, in this affordable housing book uh, look slightly higher than peers when I compare them with uh, you know peers operating with similar ticket size in ETH. uh any any specific reason for that uh the par and the gnp for us has been uh, you know consistently coming down if you if you compare the pre covid book and the post covid book uh, then rajiv our post covid book performance is significantly better than the peers and uh, mm-hmm. you know the 30 plus numbers if you can look at uh, we are better than uh, all the affordable housing players there our npa in fact for the last 22 months uh, source book is in the range of 0.1% and 30 plus is in the range of 0.5% so the new book has done very well the old book and the new book is about 65% of the overall book the old okay. old book is where the npas are and that is about uh, uh, that is about 2.4% if we look at the overall book and Uh, you know almost 30 to 35% of that is in the stage of sale of asset or reposition of asset so that gives us confidence that this number will further go down because uh, the efforts on legal that we had started almost 18 months back have given us a lot of results so a good percentage of that has been taken uh, you know the bank has taken the property is now in the process of auctioning a good number of cases are in the process of getting uh, you know the enforcement of security is happening there so mm. this old book is also you know getting cured at a very fast pace last year same time i think we were in the range of 4 and a half and now we are in the range of 2.4% and the absolute yeah. amount also has gone down by about 60 crores mm. yeah got it uh, so there is some uh, you know uh, remark that uh, there is micro lab also in this book uh, so what percentage of this affordable housing book as we see is micro lab and is this a focus product and what is the yield here uh, rajiv the micro lab product is a very focus product for us the idea is that uh, wherever the large ticket size individual loan is there in micro banking and we see that the family is able to support that uh, bigger ticket size we'll 
uh, migrate them to micro lab. However, in the current book, the amount of micro lab is just around 40 crores. Okay. Okay. And this will be scale significant. What? And in yield, yeah, uh, the yield is around 19, 19 and a half percent in that book. Great. Thanks so much. And best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Deepak Podar from Safaya Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you very much sir, for the opportunity. Uh, sir, just I wanted to understand, uh, I mean, uh, in terms of brand, I think you mentioned uh, we will be continuing the brand investment in first quarter, right? So so, uh, so, what was the quantum that we did in, uh, in, in this first quarter and how do we see that going ahead? Uh, Deepak, we won't be able to share exact expenses of the brand campaign. Uh, the brand campaign went live on 24th of July. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, whatever uh, the production cost and all was there, that was taken in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. uh, the overall cost will come in first quarter and second quarter. Okay. It uh, is a five week plus uh, brand campaign. Eight week plus, eight week uh, brand campaign is there. And the overall cost will come in both the quarters. First quarter is loaded with that, mm -hmm. and to some extent, it will be there in the second quarter as well. Okay, okay. So, 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 ideally, in the first half only, the this cost will come, right? Not in the second half. Yeah, what a lot of it has already come in the first quarter, and the balance will come in the second quarter. Okay, okay, fair enough. I, I, I understood. And, and sir, just a clarification in terms of, uh, I think this re reverse merger, I think uh, we had a, a, a last update as on 28 June, right, as you mentioned in your press release. So, so how soon we are expecting it to get through? Uh, Deepak, it's a legal matter. We won't be able to give timeline on when do we hear from the court. Uh, right now, what we can say is within this year, we believe that uh, the matter would be wrapped up within this calendar year yeah okay okay understood and 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 sir in terms of reverse merger our share outstanding will decline by about one and a half to two percent right post the merger uh, would be zero percent there will be no promoter mm -hmm. no so no, no, oh, 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 one nine two five million shares would be our revised share outstanding post the reverse merger oh, yeah post the reverse merger roughly around three crore odd shares will be cancelled net cancellation will fair enough yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 that's correct that's correct okay uh, that's it from my side sir and all the very best thank you so much thank you Deepak thank you the next question comes from the line of Prabal from Ambit please go ahead thank you am I audible yeah Prabal but a little soft can you be a little louder <laughs> is this better a little better. Yes. Uh, sir, my first question is on deposits. So, congrats on the performance uh, here. So, uh, as we are growing our deposit base, uh, how are we ensuring that uh, we also bring in customer engagement so that some portion of this new deposit accretion over a period of time becomes sticky with us and also less rate sensitive with us? Uh, hi. Uh, so on the deposit base, a lot of work is being done to increase the uh, visibility and the awareness of our brand. And uh, uh, you know, Deepak also mentioned, and uh, Mr. Davis in his speech also mentioned about the brand campaign that we are doing. So uh, we hope to garner a lot of uh, retail deposits through this campaign. We have also put in a lot of. Uh, specific customer segment-wise programs uh, which will uh, help us in growing our deposit uh, base. Um, we are also categorizing um, our customers into, um, uh, you know, uh, we've categorized our branches uh, into various categories and uh, we have also introduced the relationship management uh, piece in place. So we have a strategy for new customer acquisition as well as uh, for the existing customer acquisition. Uh, uh, you know, like I mentioned, the segment-wise programs uh, for high net worth, for customers, for senior citizens, for uh, retailers, for TARC, for women, for youth. Um, this is the way in which we will be uh, 
growing our deposit base with a specific attention to each customer segment and also um, designing products that are required for that particular segment. Um, so, you know, the strategy is new and existing, deepening our relationship and of course through the branch channels. Uh, we have also introduced the digital channel, the digital uh, fixed deposits has been recently launched and uh, that is an area too that we will be uh, uh, looking at. Our service quality is another area for our customers. The customer service uh, area is another aspect that we are strongly working on. We have the phone banking team to attend to uh, customers for any of their requests. Um, that's a channel that has been, uh, been significantly upgraded and uh, we are able to uh, do a lot of service requests through this channel. Um, so, so customer so quickly, sorry to interrupt. Uh, actually, my question was not on uh, accruing new deposits, but more on how do we make sure that these new deposits uh, become more sticky and stays with us even when yes. we reduce the interest rate? Yes, so through all this, you know, the customer service programs that we have, the multi-channel approach, the relationship management piece, uh, this is going to help us in, and, you know, segmenting our customers uh, with programs like uh, the, uh, with various programs and using analytics, we will be able to define our uh, uh, requirements for each of these customer segments and grow the, and a lot of cross-sell is going to come into the picture. So with all this, we will be able to deepen our relationship with the customers. Okay. Okay, I'll take this offline. Uh, my next question is on, uh, so sir, uh, can you tell us how is microfinance individual underwriting different from a, from a group underwriting in terms of, you know, what are the different processes in both the, both the systems? Oh, hi. So group loan, uh, the individual loan underwriting is very, very different from uh, how we do a group loan. Group loan is classical Grameen model and it happens uh, the way it happens for the industry. But as far as uh, when customers try to graduate from group loan to individual loan, we have a separate uh, fleet on the street from business side who is supposed to acquire customers and onboard customers. And then we have independent credit team right from fleet on the street to the, to the, to the uh, chief credit officers. Uh, we have independent credit team who analyzes customers based on their uh, family level income. And this practice we are following for the last, uh, say, 13-14 uh, years, which is now mandated by RBI. And this is something which is done by credit office individually and uh, loan is under written by the credit officer. Apart from that, we use a lot of data analytics to understand which customer can graduate. We have a lot of data, internal data as well as, as, well as external data as well uh, for the customers. We use this data to underwrite customers better so that we can graduate all eligible customers on GL to IL. So IL is a separate vertical where separate people are there both in business and credit. And apart from that, we use uh, data to analyze customer better. And just the last question. Uh, so what are the top three states, uh, since we have a diversified portfolio across geographies, what are the top three states where you are seeing better than expected traction? And uh, maybe if you can also highlight uh, the, the bottom three states where you are still watchful in terms of growth. Uh, you are talking about IEL or overall microfinance? Uh, overall microfinance. So our top three states uh, is uh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and West Bengal. Uh, we are, uh, obviously, we have uh, more number of branches. We started from here in regions. And as far as uh, you know, bottom three, you know, is, uh, as such, we don't have bottom three in, in terms of growth. We have number of branches which is different in different states. But at this point of time, I would say that Assam is something where the industry is facing issue. And we are also very cautious. And we are doing, uh, you know, uh, we have changed our strategy in the state of Assam. Apart from that, we don't see any uh, state where we uh, see uh, you know, growth which is uh, very low at this point of time. Overall growth is at par with the average growth of uh, OG1 microfinance business. All right, all right. Okay, thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Last question comes from the line of Preet Nagar Seth from Wealth Finwiser. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, so I wanted to better understand uh, the upgrades, the recoveries, and the written off numbers that you posted on in the presentation. Um, I thought you mentioned that the right back was, the back back recovery was, what, about 35 crores for this quarter? Yes, 35 crores. So how is this 77 and 60 coming? Could you just explain that? 
uh, plead that 77 is the NPA recovery and upgrade that is in addition to the 35 crore of uh, bad debt recovery. That 35 crore is bad debt recovery, something that has been written off the book. This 77 is upgrades and recoveries of uh, from the NPA book, which is still there on the book. And this 60 crore is fresh write-off during this quarter. 52 is technical write-off and around uh, 7 odd crore is uh, other write-off. So is it a write-off or is it a write-back? Write-off. Okay, because if you see the maths then because you are you're, you're starting mm -hmm. NPA, uh, then you have your slippages and then you uh, are adding back the recoveries. Uh, no, so if the math says you have a starting NP of 631 and there is a slippage of 103. Oh, okay. Then you have upgrade. So you reduce that 77. Then you have write-off. So you reduce that 60. And the ending uh, or the closing NPA is 597. Gotcha. So how much of this can we expect to have continue for the next quarters? Could it be in a similar uh, range? Are you uh, asking for uh, NPA guidance? That's correct. So we are at around 2.4% and uh, we would be ending the year by around say 2% on number. Okay, so exit quarter should be around 2%. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to understand uh, was that uh, should we expect a dip in disbursement for the second quarter given the flood situation that's ongoing in various parts of the country? The flood situation has not really impacted so much on the business. So it's a temporary uh, phenomenon in few days at few districts. So right now we do not want to say that it will impact the overall performance of the quarter. Neither on the collection side nor on the business side, disbursement side. Gotcha. And the last question is, can you shed some li light on the Ujjivan Hello app and how is that helping you win business on the ground or give you a, a right to win vis-a-vis -vis see all the other competitors out there. I didn't get your query. Can you repeat? But basically the Hello Ujjivan app that you have out there, right? How so your question is around Hello Ujjivan and how it will help us and customers. That's correct. And how is it helping you vis-a-vis -vis competition, right? Because one of the lines... Yeah, I yeah. Mean, so, yeah. So, hello, Jeevan. I just, we mentioned in the last, uh, you know, call also that this is something which we have developed for, especially for microfinance and rural customers. As we realize that our, uh, uh, the, uh, the original application, our customers are not able to use because they can't read. And this application is where the customer can talk, can talk to the application and do their banking transactions. At the same time, we see this uh, as an opportunity where we, this can, channel can be used by our customers uh, in various activities, including uh, onboarding repeat loans for our customers on this application. Today we have about uh, over 3 lakh customers who have already downloaded and we, that's, uh, that is the exciting news that customers are liking the application. Uh, soon we will also uh, have uh, repayments uh, is already there and customers, a lot of customers are repaying through this application, uh, which also reduces your cost because your cost of transaction becomes zero. Uh, but at the same time, as we onboard repeat loans on this uh, application, once the customer is onboarded in G1 for loans, the repeat loans, top-up loans, and other services which customers want around loan can be serviced through mobile application. This can be a game changer, and we are working on we're working very hard on building this application to ensure that all services, future services when customer is onboarded, can be offered through this application, including repeat, top-up, TD, reliability relationship. We are trying to onboard uh, through this application. So yes, uh, this is something which customers are liking at this point of time. A lot of customers have installed, but at the same time, we are seeing a lot of new features being added in Hello G1 going forward in this financial year. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Wish all you guys all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question comes from the line of Sanjay Pandit from 1729 Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, we are in a great quarter. Um, Hi, no, Sanjay. Was, here, you are not audible, Sanjay. Can you be a little louder? Uh, can you hear me now? Can yeah. you hear me now? One second. Yeah, better. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, better. I, I um, can hear you. Okay, I'll go ahead. 
Okay. So my my question is, for those holding Ujjivan Financial Services, the holding company, going into the reverse merger, um, uh, does the ratio pretty much stand as is? And if so, would uh, would there be some kind of cash distribution prior to the reverse merger? And uh, regardless of that, um, what kind of sort of per share book value accretion can Ujjivan Small Finance Bank expect to have uh, concurrent with the reverse merger uh, by, by virtue of, I guess, some cash coming into the, to the bank? Sanjay, book value accretion would be rupees two or maybe a little more. Uh, there's roughly around 180 crore of uh, cash that UFSL currently has. So that will come to the bank plus a 200 yeah. crore of preference shares are there which will get cancelled. So that will also come to the bank. So a total of 380 crore as is which is there if uh, and plus uh, whatever uh, the bank has proposed a dividend if that get approved tomorrow that will also come to USSL. So that amount will come to USSL. And uh, depending upon if or whether UFSL distributes that money in form of dividend or not or whatever is the amount, basis that we still believe th at least 380 odd crore is there which will come to the bank, which means roughly 2 rupees book value accretion would be there for bank. Uh, there would be no cash distribution to UFSL shareholder as part of the reverse merger. Understood. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you. Due to time constraints, that was the final question. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Well, I thank you all for uh, joining us uh, you know, in this session. It's been uh, wonderful to take your questions and answer them. If there are any questions that remain unanswered, please uh, contact Deepak or Madhusudan at our offices here in Bangalore, and we'll be happy to respond to you. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Shah, IFL, for their coordination and hosting of this call, and to Chorus for their logistics. Thank you very much. On behalf of IIFL Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>